and welcome to Thought for the Day from Avon Valley Churches. My name is Canon Sue Wallace and today I'm going to think about these strange things called Ember Days. Ever had a Four Seasons pizza? This week is the church's equivalent. Ember Days are four seasonal times of prayer and one of them is this week. The term comes from a really weird corruption of quator tempora, four times. You can see why I'm thinking of the Four Seasons Pizza now. Um, one in each season, which is what their Latin name was. These four special times of prayer happened once in each of those four seasons. German people called these days quatember, quatember. And so you can see how in English it got shortened to ember. Nothing to do with coals and a lot to do with the seasons. If you can hear tippy tappy noises, that's my little dog Florence. But anyway, back to ember days. They're quarterly three day periods of special prayer in the liturgical calendar. These traditionally take place on Wednesday, Friday and Saturday in mid-December, near the start of Lent, and the weeks nearest the 29th of June and the 29th of September. Because people were focusing on prayer during those times, these have been traditional times for ordination, when everybody's praying anyway. Times when new priests and new deacons were made to serve the church when after a period of training and prayer and reflection and interview and study and testing, a bishop would lay their hands on a person and they would become a deacon or a priest. Their life would be changed. They'd become a representative of the church in public life. The deacons would go out and preach and teach and baptize and serve others telling them of Christ. The priest would be able to bless people, to pronounce God's forgiveness, and they would be able to celebrate communion, breaking bread upon the altar table, just as Jesus' body was broken on the cross, and saying those incredible words of Jesus, this is my body, do this to remember me, and pouring out the wine as Jesus' blood was poured out, this is my blood, the blood of a new covenant, a new deal between us and God. A deal which offers us forgiveness and a new start. Once upon a time, thinking back to Ember days, people were encouraged to fast on those three days leading up to these special events. Not completely, but just giving up meat and having one simple meal. These days, because ordinations happen on Ember Days, the churches encourage us to spend these days praying for those preparing for that life change of ordination. And also to pray for vocations for people be, to be called. Vocation, it comes from that Latin word vocare, to call. Society often says that priests and deacons and vicars and nuns and monks have a vocation and people sometimes say it of doctors and nurses too. But actually it's true of all of us. What is your calling? What are your callings? We can have different callings at different times. Mother, father, teacher, but also server, or PCC member, or church warden, or engineer, or accountant. We can have callings within callings. I was called as a priest, but also as a liturgist, someone called to write prayers and create resources for worship. But within all our callings, we are called to be human beings who follow Jesus' way of love. These callings stack within each other like Russian dolls. So what is your calling? What are your callings? Are you being called to something new? or to remember the thing you were called to a long time ago. How do you know you're called? 
Frederick Birchner said this, which I think is really helpful. The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. That place where you get excited and enthused, where you get to use your talents, where you feel at home, but also it's a place where others are helped by those things that you do in big ways or in little ways. Henry Newman said this, God has created me to do him some definite service. He's committed some work to me, which he's not committed to another. I have my mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told it in the next. I'm a link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons. He's not created me for naught. I shall do good. I shall do his work. I shall be an angel of peace, a preacher of truth in my own place, while not intending it if I do, but keep his commandments. Therefore, I will trust him, whatever I am. I can never be thrown away. Never. If I am in sickness, my sickness may serve him. In perplexity, my perplexity may serve him. If I'm in sorrow, my sorrow may serve him. He does nothing in vain. He knows what he is about. God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me, which he has not committed to another. So on these next few days, as Tom Burden and all the new deacons prepare for ordination. Let us pray for them and for God to call new people, not just to be priests or monks or deacons or nuns, but for all the people of God to discover those special tasks that only they are equipped to do. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to finish with a song by my friend Lacey Brown uh, from the Church of the Apostles based on the lovely passage from Micah, which I think sums up the calling within all our callings. Do justly, love mercy, walk humbly with our God. What is good? What does love require? What does love require of you? Care for your sister Love one another Live justice Love What is good? What is good? What is love?